All right, I'm going to go ahead and call the special um, presentation ceremony to order. We only have one presentation tonight, and so that is um, the recognition of the Homestead Center for the Arts as Artists in the Spotlight for the month of October and November. And so I'd like to invite up Carolyn Jensen, who I believe is going to be the, the speaker on behalf of the organization. So tell us a little bit about your artwork, about all the artists that are participating, and then if you're going to be having a artist night uh, when everybody can come out there and, and see the works. My name is Caroline Jensen, and I'm proud to re represent the uh, artists from Homestead Council of the Arts. We are an organization that was founded in 1977. We have 20 affiliates and many individual memberships, and anyone who is interested, we would love to have you join us. We are presenting at the Seminole Theater our artwork, and uh, I believe uh, shortly after the renovation of the Seminole Theater, a young vice mayor suggested that there be a permanent place for our art. Thank you, Mr. Shelley. We appreciate that. We have uh, our art showing in throughout the Seminole, and it will be there until the end, I believe, of, of December. On November the 14th, we have a reception for our artists and for those who would like to come. And I, I invite you, please, to come see the wonderful artwork that we have. We have an amazing amount of artists. Our organization uh, has artists. We have photographers. We have wood turners. We have orchid growers. We have gardeners. And I have always believed that a community needs art all kinds of art to be successful, and we are doing our best as at the Homestead Council of the Arts. Please come to see us. Come, uh, ex I extend the invitation November the 14th from 6 to 8 at the Seminole Theater. The program that we have now is uh, Essence, the Essence of Florida. The program name, thanks to you, is the artist in the spotlight, and our artists now are doing the essence uh, of Florida. I think if you come to see what we have shown, this is an, one of the art pieces, and this is one of our photographers. Uh, you will be so impressed with what we have in our community. And I think it's important for people outside of our community to realize that we have great tomatoes, we have great strawberry shakes. We have great uh, nurseries, but we also have art and we also have culture. So I thank you for the uh, presentation. I in, again invite you to come see us. And if you can't come to our reception, I suggest that you go to the Seminole for one of the exciting performances that they have. And when you are there, walk around. Both floors are full of our art. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think, you know, I like, I like when we have a, a grouping of artists. I mean, it's great when we have one single artist that ultimately comes and does their presentation and does their work, but the great thing I like is when you have a, a group of them with all different inspirations, all different types, all different medias, and they're all in one location. And so you're able to go and see photography and see paintings and, like you said, sculptures and other things, and it's all in a one-stop shop, and I think it really... Um, you know, it's, it's more of a, a full body experience. And so I appreciate you guys for being able to participate in this program and having your artwork. And, and I encourage everybody in the audience, everyone that's watching on TV, uh, to go and see that work, artwork in first hand, come to our downtown and, and meet the artists firsthand because they like to talk about what inspires them and about their artwork. So thank you for your presentation tonight. So, oh, do you have, somebody else would like to say one more thing? Yeah, well, if someone wants to, because we're the only uh, presentation tonight, so if someone wants to come back up to the microphone and introduce by name the artist, we don't have time for each one to speak, but you can definitely have them each stand up and, and wave, and that way everybody at home that's watching and everybody up here can, can know them by face and by name. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll bring this down. And we actually have a total of 26 artists that are on display with 40 different pieces. And so tonight, here with us, and if you would each stand... And I'm going to start, and I know I'm going to mess your name up. Is it Ina or Ina? Ina, please stand. It's one of our photographers, Claudia. 
Marta, Pilar, Tanya, you're next. Patricia, Carol, I'm just missing, don't look around. Marie, Bill, Bill, you're in the back. Bill, Bill. He's one of our photographers, Susan Sorrentino, who of course has actually been an artist in the spotlight previously. And then of course my husband, Hugh Hudson. That's his photograph over here. Judy Brown, this is her uh, 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 painting. She wasn't able to be with us this evening. So here you are, folks, some of the artists of the, some of the 26 artists we have on display. Thank you guys again. That'll conclude the special um, presentation ceremony. What I'd like to do is after we close the ceremony, if all the artists would like to come up, we'll do a group picture up here in front of the artwork for the uh, for display and for promotion of the upcoming event. So that concludes the, uh, the meeting. Thank you. I would like to call the Wednesday, October 23rd, 2019 council meeting to order at 6.01 p.m. This evening we will have the invocation by Pastor Kenneth Greathouse, Pastor of Pentecostal of Homestead Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance with Councilman Guzman and the Homestead Police Explorers. Would you please stand? Father, we want to thank you tonight for the privilege and the honor to be here and to pray before this great town, for this great council, and these citizens of Homestead. Your word tells us that it is wise of us to ask for wisdom, to ask for counsel, and to ask for leadership, and to ask for guidance. So that is what we're here for tonight, to ask for your guidance, your direction, and your help. We ask this tonight in the precious and mighty powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Roth. Here. Councilwoman Bailey. Here. Councilman Maldonado. Here. Councilman Guzman. Here. Vice Mayor Burgess. Here. Mayor Shelley. Here. Any additions, deletions, or deferrals? Uh, yes, we had a request for the applicant on tab 16 and 19 to defer to next month's meeting, uh, date certain of November 20th. You don't need any type of motion for that, right? No. no. Uh, consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move it. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes carry. Uh, public hearings. Yes, please be advised the following items on the agenda are quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to comment upon any of these items, please indicate the item number you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi-judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on each item. Swearing in, all testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you do not wish to either be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the council to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. 
The full agenda package on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Code Section 2-591, any lobbyist must register before addressing the council on any of the following items. At this time, council members must disclose any ex parte communications concerning the, any items on the agenda this evening. Vice Mayor Burgess. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. I spoke with the representatives uh, dealing with the, I believe it's 11, 12, 13, everything for the 7-Eleven. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Roth. Likewise, anything dealing with 7-Eleven, I also spoke to the representatives. Councilwoman Bailey. Same for me, please. Councilman Guzman. I also spoke to the applicant, 7-Eleven. Perfect. And then I, I as well had uh, meetings on tab 11, 12, and 13. So hear, hear, hearing no further comments at this time, I will ask the clerk to swear any persons who wish to testify on any of the quasi-judicial items. So anyone in the audience who is wishing to speak on the, any quasi-judicial item this evening, please uh, stand, raise your right hand to be sworn by the clerk. Hereby yeah, swear or affirm that the information I present shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you, you may be seated. So Mayor, tabs 11, 12, and 13 all deal with the same project, 7-Eleven. I can introduce each one of those. We could have a collective discussion and then take a separate vote on each. Perfect, does anybody have any objection to combining those three? No, all right, go ahead. Tab 11 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving a special exception requested by 7-Eleven, Inc. to permit an approximately 3,109 square foot convenience store with 16 self-service ancillary gas pumps for property generally located on the southwest corner of intersection of Northeast 8th Street, Campbell Drive, and Southwest 147th Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Tab 12 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting site plan approval for an approximately 3,109 square foot convenience store with 16 self-service ancillary gas pumps for properly generally located on the southwest corner intersection of Northeast 8th Street, Campbell Drive, and Southwest 147th Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. And tab 13 is a final order of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting a certificate of use requested by 7-Eleven, Inc. to permit the sale of beer and wine for off-premises consumption in conjunction with the operation of a convenience store generally located at the southwest corner the intersection of Northeast 8th Street, Campbell Drive, and Southwest 147th Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Staff report? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, staff recommends the mayor and council approve the, uh, each of these three, the special exception, the site plan, and the certificate of use. This all comes, uh, this is all basically part of the Crystal Lakes plan unit development which is about 68 acres, half of it is residential, half of it is commercial. It was approved back in 2004. It was amended back in 2015 um, to uh, permit all the retail commercial uses that are in the B1 district. This happens to fit into that category. So we reviewed it to the code for both the special exception, the certificate of use, and the site plan, and found that it met uh, are the code requirements for each of those three. And so we're recommending approval. Any questions from council? I did have one question because um, I wasn't here at the, the last. Well, actually, let's, let's hear it. Does the applicant say from the applicant first? Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Heidi Davis with the law firm of Gunster, 450 East Las Olas Boulevard, Suite 1400, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hi. How are you? Good evening. I'm going to set up a PowerPoint real quick. Did you have a question, Mayor, or you wanted to wait till after the presentation? No, go ahead if you want to. Okay, do. great. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm assuming I'm going to do this right. Here we go. <laughs> Good evening again. Um, I am Heidi Davis. I represent 7-Eleven Inc., the applicant for the property, the proposed located at Southwest corner of Campbell Drive and Southwest 147th Avenue. And we are proposing a new 7-Eleven convenience store with gas service at this location. The property is over an acre in size. 
and it is an out parcel in the larger commercial track to be developed. As staff indicated, the property is part of the Crystal Lake PUD, which permits commercial uses on this property. The property is surrounded by all non-residential commercial uses, and this use will be compatible with the use. With me today are representatives of 7-Eleven and the project management team, our engineer, and anybody if you have any questions during our presentation. As background, and a couple of you were not here at the last um, council meeting, so as background, the Planning and Zoning Board on July 10th unanimously approved this application, all three of them, and then we came before you on July 24th and you graciously allowed us to defer the item until we met with you and proposed design changes to the facade of the building. So here we are, we're back. We've incorporated over the last three months several design changes going through different reiterations and we'd like to present those architectural changes to you tonight. We want to thank you guys for making us make a better project for the city of Homestead. The original design that we proposed, and I'll show you right here, was a very simple design, very simple architect, clean lines. But the, we, the why we did this was it was very consistent with the, with the, the new 7-Eleven that's right down the street on Dixie. It's the same architecture, it's the same features. So we were trying to make it a consistent Homestead type of project. So, but through our conversations and through Councilwoman Faircloth's direction and guidance, we proposed some additional features on our building. So this was the second design. This was an existing project that 7-Eleven did. It incorporated more stone around the base of the structure, around the canopy poles, lots of different architectural features. Um, we did raise the roof to have variations in the roof lines, and we did painted um, columns to kind of accentuate the banding. It's a lighter color, and we thought it was a great thing. We, it stood out with the stone, but we wanted more. So we threw out different ideas, and we came up with this idea. Now, this is the one we're proposing this evening. It, in fact, has four stone columns on the facade. It really breaks up the mass of that, of that facade. It really accentuates it with the stone along the base as well as those four stone columns. Again, it will have the stone around the, the um, canopy columns that for the gas station. The height of the building was increased at the parapet to even add more variation of the roof. There's stone cap corners, as you can see on them, to raise it and create a different roof line. Um, horizontal and ba um, vertical banding, architectural elements and cornices and um, sconces. We also um, changed the color. We wanted it and through Councilwoman Faircloth's direction, she wanted it a little darker in color to match with the surrounding uses, the 24-hour fitness, the, the racetrack, and also the mall in that area. So these are just the three back-to-back, -back, so you can see the comparisons of how much we worked and how hard we worked over the last three months to really make a, bring a, a better product to the city of Homestead. Um, also, our site plan features that are here. We have, it's a very small footprint. It's only about 3,100 square feet. It will have eight multi-dispensing pumps, which are all brand new state-of-the-art technology, brand new tanks, lines, dispensers, all, like I said, state-of-the-art, high-tech. The building is only one story. Um, it has lush landscaping all around the property. It uses existing access points off of Campbell Drive and 147th Avenue. Um, and we create a safe vehicular and pedestrian environment to walk around and through the, the property. Um, the special exception criteria from code section 30-45D, staff has determined that we have met all of the criteria. It is compatible with the, um, the surrounding areas. There will be no adverse impact. I'm gonna bring up our traffic consultant. He's gonna um, say a few words about the traffic and so you guys can um, hear what he has to say. It's all consistent with the comprehensive plan and very all compliant with code. We're not asking for any variances. Um, the design we just went through, it's compatible with this, the surrounding area. And the timing and pattern of development is such that in order for the shopping center around us to be redeveloped, 
we are the first step. So basically, we are the seed money, basically, to be able to develop for the developer behind us. So as we bring this development in, it'll, it'll, it's great timing, and we'll be further on that development path. So I'm going to bring up Carl Peterson, who's our traffic engineer. He's going to say a few words about it, and then I'll come back. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the Council. My name is Carl Peterson with KBP Consultants, Traffic Engineers, offices at 8400 North University Drive in Tamarack. We were the traffic engineering uh, consultants responsible for the preparation of the uh, traffic impact study for this particular project. Prior to initiating our analysis, we spent a great deal of time and effort uh, developing a very in-depth and thorough methodology for preparing this traffic impact study. That's the parameters we look at, the intersections that we evaluate, the time of day, the various parameters that we implement to assess what the traffic impacts of a development such as this will be. And uh, we work very closely with your staff and your traffic engineering consultant to finalize that methodology which we based our study upon as we went forward. The initial study uh, that we prepared uh, for this project was prepared in November of last year. Uh, and it was submitted and reviewed by the city's consultant and comments were provided to us in February of this year. We addressed all of those comments uh, to the city's satisfaction in uh, March um, and ultimately received our approval on the traffic impact study. In summary, it was determined that um, the project traffic associated with this development uh, would not result in a significant impact on the roadway network or degrade the level of service or operating characteristics of the intersections throughout our study area. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that um, much of the traffic associated with this type of use is traffic that's already on the street network. As you probably in your own lives experience what we call in the traffic engineering business pass-by traffic, and that's traffic that's already on the street network that stops in to get gas or a convenience store item but you're already on the street network, so the additional impacts that are created uh, by this use are lessened as a result of that operating characteristic for this specific use. Um, I will say as a result of one of the uh, comments that we received from the uh, city's traffic consultant, uh, we did identify a, a specific improvement uh, that will help operations at the intersection of Campbell and 147th, and that has to do with some signal timing modification and signal head modifications, particularly for the northbound approach as you're coming up 147th, specifically to turn left to go toward the turnpike. That will significantly improve the operations of that movement and, and enhance the overall operations of the area in terms of traffic. I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, once we wrap up the uh, presentation, but uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. So we also are applying for a certificate of use for beer and wine sales from off-site consumption. And we satisfy the criteria that's in section 3-11C of the code. Um, it, we, the use of selling beer and wine will not generate excessive noise or traffic. It's not going to create a fire or dangerous hazard. Um, will not provoke excessive overcrowding. Again, this is an off-site, uh, they don't, cannot um, drink it on-site, they have to carry it off-site. Um, it will not endanger the health, safety, or welfare of the residents. We are surrounded by commercial, we don't have any of that impacts, and will be comp compatible with the surrounding property. It's non-residential uses around. Um, and we comply again with all zoning and building regulations. Staff has found the application to satisfy the criteria for the certificate of use. So we are set there. Um, we also wanted to just bring to your attention some of 7-Eleven's community programs that we have that you may not be aware of. 7-Eleven um, promotes a lot of different youth programs including a plus program to encourage students to get better grades 
um, Operation Chill. We work with our the police department to hand out Slurpee tickets and different things. And in fact, the city of Homestead works with 7-Eleven on this. They are a city that has signed up to participate. Um, also, Project A Game, which donates $711 to neighborhood schools. So if you are a neighborhood school around a 7-Eleven, a 7-Eleven franchisee will, will donate to your school for, for playground equipment or for whatever use you want it. Um, the CEO of 7-Eleven Inc. is a veteran, and he is very um, proud and wants franchisees to be veterans and offers a lot of different incentives for franchisees. Um, they offer, they, they gave away an entire franchisee, to, a franchise to a veteran, and they promote a lot of different financing options for them. Um, we also donate our food, anything that's, it's not expired food, but anything that's maybe close to on the shelf that they'll take away, they'll give to food banks and shelters. And also 7-Eleven has healthy food alternatives nowadays that are great for coming in and going snacks. Um, in conclusion, we just want to say that it's a you know beautiful, compatible architecture. The project meets or exceeds the provisions of the code, including the site plan and adequacy provisions. Um, it satisfies the special exception criteria, the certificate of use criteria. It's a great community partner. And 7-Eleven will provide convenience for the residents, economic benefits for the city, and direct and indirect jobs for Homestead residents. If you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer. Again, we have our staff here, and I mean our um, team here, to answer anything you may have. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Rick, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Burgess. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to say thank you for the for the presentation and thank you for coming back. Uh, sure. Last time you were here, Mayor Shelley wasn't here, and I was running the meeting, and I know that it came to an abrupt end for you that evening, kind of. Uh, but thank you, thank you to everybody from 7-Eleven and your staff for for doing the the extra work to bring a product that I think is what we were all looking for and hoping for when when we saw and 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 asked you to go back and and redo something. And you know it leads us <clears throat> to after you were here that month, the next month I went and, and brought a, uh, a workshop or some things forward that are being introduced slowly into the into the thing to, to help everybody understand so that when an applicant does come here, they're not struck when they come up and think they're on the home stretch that, oh boy, we've got to go back and do some more work. So, you know, with the with the planning and the building department, we've got them working to, to implement some new things to help. And hopefully all the products that come forward um, from now on, we'll, we'll meet these standards that I think you guys have brought tonight for 7-Eleven. I think it, you know it's it's a big improvement. I think uh, from where we started to where we are today. So thank you to you and all your staff. Thank you, Councilman Guzman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, echoing on what Vice Mayor said, I I do also appreciate <clears throat> the communication that we've had and to go back and to you know enhance the appearance. But I did want to ask, how did you get from um, the second? rendering to the third rendering? Um, well, we, Councilwoman Faircloth, when we, went, when we proposed the second, she said it still looks a little empty on the front. Would you be kind enough to put it of back course, up? I on think the I may have messed up. <clears throat> I don't know what I did, so, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, oh, there we go, okay, we're good now. Sorry, thank you. Okay. You wanted the side by side, this yeah. one? Yes, why please. do I keep doing this? I'm doing the wrong one. Oh, I, that's why, sorry. I'm pushing right here. Okay. Okay. So it started as the simple box, then it went to the lighter color, right? Mm -hmm. Color, and then it got to the third one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, Vice Mayor Burgess, you have a follow up? Just, yeah, well, I do to our. Uh, to Mr. Brea, <clears throat> I know that um, they had some statements about improving the traffic and and, and the traffic. Excuse me, the northbound traffic flow there on 147. I know that we had been trying to to improve that through the county ourselves with a double turn lane there. Have we gotten anywhere on that? Has that reminded me of of that project that we? Or yeah, you're absolutely right. They're still working on the design on the on the study for that need. 
Uh, they, they said it would take around 60 days, so they should be almost finished with it. We'll check up with them and make sure that they're still working on that. Because right, I think that'll uh, help that, whole, that entire intersection and the business also. Yeah, that will help. We, yeah, that we will definitely help. We reached out to the county uh, I will a do. while back, we'll do. so that should we'll help do. also. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments from council for the applicant or in, or in general? No? Okay. I'm going to open, open up the public hearing. This is a public hearing. Anybody... Um, like to speak on this tab 11, 12, or 13, please come up and state your name and address for the record. M. Hill, Southwest Side. My major issue with this is the transparency once again. A lot of times these applicants come here and you all are adamantly opposing what they're doing to a degree. And then you tell them, well, maybe if you come by my office and we'll have a talk or whatever. Then the next month, they come up and everything's all hunky-dory. There seems to be elements that are left out to the public. Last month, this applicant was here, and I love 7-Eleven. I like to get me a good cold Slurpee in the summertime. However, and I, and I love the contributions that they could make to our, to our city, but it seems as though it gives the appearance of a shakedown. And I want businesses to be able to come into the city of Homestead and be able to deal in transparency. Because when you do have a reputable um, reputation like a 7-Eleven in all communities across the United States, there shouldn't be such a hindrance and a problem with my city council to the point that they have to go behind closed doors and then come back and everybody's lovey, lovey dovey. Seems a little bit shaky right there. Any additional uh, questions or comments from the, co or from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any additional questions or comments from council? Seeing none. I did wanna just, um, cause I wasn't here the last time that you guys did the presentation. But I did want to, one of my questions was whether or not you had a chance to actually meet with Councilwoman Faircloth. And through your presentation, obviously, you were able to, because you were able to make some changes in the design based on her request or her, her feedback. So I think that was good. Um, generally speaking, though, I, because I wasn't here last time, I just wanted to kind of put mine. I, I do appreciate all the changes you guys made to the design. I know we had a chance to meet, and I saw where you guys had come from versus where you are now. And it's definitely a much higher end product than it was when it started. So I do appreciate the efforts that you guys have made. Uh, to kind of accommodate the request made by the city council and, and from an aesthetic standpoint and trying to bring a higher end uh, product over to, to the east side of town um, to kind of fit in. I'm not necessarily a big fan of gas pumps or, or gas stations. I don't know that we necessarily need another one at that corner. I know we had that conversation when we met as well. So I, I won't be voting for it, but I did want to make sure that you knew that I did appreciate the efforts that you made. I know that you'll be a good neighbor if the council does approve ultimately the project, um, but it was just more or less just to explain what my vote ultimately will be. I just respond real quick. Sure, sure, go ahead. Thank go ahead. you, thank you, Offer. I um I did a little research in on this area, and I I know that when we spoke, you said you didn't want another gas station there. But I I did research, and within a circumference of eight miles in this area, there's only two gas stations. So the new racetrack, and then the Chevron the Chevron down at the end of the street. So out of a circumference of eight miles. There's only two, so there's a great need. I mean, at least that's what the market study for 7-Eleven, when they go out and do, they show that there is a need for, for this type of use, and I just wanted to respond. I know you don't like it, but I just wanted to respond that there is, that's, there was a method to their, you know, Understood. methodology to their madness. No, completely there. understand, and <laughs> I don't disagree that, that over a larger space in that yeah. area that there, there likely is a need for some additional gas stations. Yeah. My concern is just that we had one just put in side by side to this one. So it's more or less the geographic orientation of one right next to the other. Now, if you were a block or two over, I would likely have a difference of opinion. But because I kind of have a gas station in that immediate vicinity, it's kind of what, what maybe would be a better use for that particular corner piece. Nothing against the 7-Eleven or, or the project or, or your guys' presentation, but I am going to vote against it. So I wanted to make sure I at least had stated on the record why that was. So, but again, thank you for your, thank you. your presentation. Thank you very much. So, thank you. Do I have a motion uh, on tab 11? Move it. Do I have a mo motion moved and second? Councilman Guzman, do you have a comment? No, I wanted to make the motion to move. Okay. 
Roll call, Madam Clerk. Tab 11. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? No. The motion carries. Tab 12. Do I have a motion on tab 12? Moved. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? No. The motion carries. Tab 13. Do I have a motion? Moved. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 14. Uh, yes, Mayor. Tab 14 and 15 uh, pertain to the same project. One site plan approval, one's tentative plat for a new subdivision. I could introduce both of those. You can have a collective discussion, public hearing, and then take a separate vote on each. Any adjustments from, from Council? No? Go ahead. So tab 14 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting site plan approval for 10 lot single family residential subdivision on approximately 2.6 acre parcel generally located south of Southwest 320th Street, Maui Drive, east of Southwest 17th Avenue, north of Southwest 2nd Court, and west of Southwest 16th Avenue, as legally, legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. And tab 15 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting tenants of plat approval requested by Corner Investment Group, LLC, for 10 dwelling unit residential single family subdivision on an approximately 2.6 acre parcel located south of 320th Street, east of Southwest 17th Avenue, north of Southwest 2nd Court, and west of Southwest 16th Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A, consisting of approximately 3.7 acres, no, that's a mistake, it's legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, sir, we're recommending Mayor and Council approve this request for the site plan and the tentative plat. Uh, the zoning, and the land use are consistent, so this is allowed in the area. We reviewed the site plan under section uh, chapter 30 and uh, for zoning and 32 in the design guidelines, and it conforms with all of the, the, uh, the criteria there. And we reviewed the tentative plat under our code, chapter 25, the county's code, chapter 28, and the state's code, chapter 177, and that conforms with all of the provisions in those three levels of government. So again, we're recommending approval of this. Any questions or comments from Council? Vice Mayor Burgess. I think if I saw it, I overlooked it. How many different model types are they proposing that they're going to sell in this? I believe they're recommending two, one on the corner and then the same model types in the center. But if the applicant's here, I'll let them confirm that. The applicant here? Okay. You can come up and answer, answer the question, please. Please state your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Irving Peña, uh, Corning Investment Group, 5001 Southwest, 193rd Lane, Southwest Ranches, Florida, 33332. So I, I guess my question to you then, with the units that you're going to build, there's two different model units, there's only two models? Yes. Okay. It's a small, but yeah, the yeah. size pretty square. I, know, I was hoping to maybe have three where they weren't bing, bang, boom, the same. You can mix it up, but the whole actually... Thing. It's straightforward. It's a straight lot, so no, I there's not I saw, much we I saw. can do there. I drove out there and looked at the property or anything, so, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments from Council? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. I open to the public. Any questions or comments from the public on tab 14 or tab 15? If so, please come up here and state your name and address for the record. Do you have a public comment? My name is Isaac Quidistan. Uh, my address is on uh, 95 Southwest 17th Avenue, West Maury. The, the problem uh, we would have. Can you, it's hard to hear. Can you speak into the microphone mm -hmm. a little bit closer? The problem we would, we would have with the complex, we're going to have problem traffic from uh, 6 o'clock to 7.50, 8 o'clock. If you 
leave, you're going somewhere, you got to make a cut short. He start from West Homestead, going to Mori until 18 Avenue, Southwest section. That we're going to have a lot of problem with this area, with this the complex. So that's only a problem I would have. And if you can do something with it, it would be better for us because uh, we have, I live home since 1979. The traffic we have now is really, really, really bad about for West section. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments from the public on tab 14 or 15? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, Vice Mayor Murgis. To Mr. Cordino, um, I'm assuming this gentleman's uh, concern was traffic and, and egress, ingress, uh, egress and ingress and all that. Uh, we've looked at that and, and no issues, or can you please address the man's concerns for me? Yes, sir. We, we had a the traffic study was performed by the applicant and we reviewed it and we found that the, the level of service is in, within within uh, the adequate range and they actually the development is so small it had a de minimis impact on the, the street traffic, which means it, it didn't add um, even, uh, it didn't equate to, uh, it equated to less than 10% of the volumes on the road in the first place. So it, ha it has a very minimal impact and it doesn't uh, push the roadway over the level of service standard. Thank you, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, and I had a question too related to kind of traffic ingress and egress and that is, you know, looking at the, I guess, the site plan as it's connected, is, is there only one way in and one way out here, or does this actually connect over to the other subdivision? Because it, it, I can't tell from the site plans or the drawings, because it looks like there's a spur that goes out um, toward the bottom of the page, toward, and it looks like it connects with Southwest 2nd Street and Southwest 16th Avenue, which looks like the existing buildings that are there, but I can't tell whether or not they do, in fact, connect. And when I looked at it from the Google Earth side, you could couldn't see if there was somebody's yard already built over where that roadway is. It does connect. It does connect. Yes. So there is actually multiple ways in and out of, yes, of the community two. versus just being, okay. Because that was a question I did have as well. Any additional questions or comments from council on this item? Seeing none, Councilman Guzman. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'm just glad to see that there are single family homes now starting to, for applicants starting to put single families instead of the higher density types of things. So. I like this uh, project. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion on tab 14? No. Do I have a second? second. Moved and seconded. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilman Rawls? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Do I have a motion on tab 15? Noted. Do I have a second? Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. All right, tab 16, we skip. So tab, tab 17. Yes, Mayor. Uh, tab 17 is site plan approval um, for a proposed um, uh, business in the Park of Commerce. The corresponding tab um, that goes with this is tab 22. Um, so if you'd like to take those together so you can discuss both of those. Yeah, I, I assume we will, but I'll ask again. Just any, any opposition? No, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Tab 17 is resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting site plan approval requested by J&B Property Investment, LLC, for a 12,000 square foot manufacturing facility on an approximately 0.675 acre parcel located within the Park of Commerce on the southwest corner intersection between Southeast 14th Court and Southwest 142nd Avenue as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. And then tab 22 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida granting a waiver from the non-performance penalty fee liquidated damages associated with the default of the agreement to build requested by J&B Investment LLC as defined herein authorizing the city manager and city attorney to take all action and execute all documents necessary to implement the waiver and providing for an effective date. 
Staff report. Yes, sir. We are recommending approval of the site plan and the uh, and the uh, waiver of the non-performance penalty fees from the agreement to build. Again, this is uh, an area in the Park of Commerce that in in that uh, in that uh, plan unit development, which uh, this meets all the provisions of the master plan uh, and, and those rules out there. We measured it from a site planning perspective. It fits from the use perspective. It's it's almost exactly what the uh, what the Park of Commerce calls for. It's kind of a very clean indoor light industrial kind of a manufacturing, a pretty sophisticated operation. So from that sense, uh, the use is perfect. The uh, site plan conforms with our codes. The issue that we have with this development is that back in apparently 2006, uh, there was an agreement to build that was uh, put on with the I guess the previous owner, Silver Arrow, and. Uh, Based on their approval, they had been given a certain amount of time to get their building permits, um, and uh, um, and the fee to, the fee from that was about forty nine thousand dollars. If they didn't get the permits in a certain amount of time, they would owe the city forty nine thousand uh, dollars. It didn't happen. Uh, they came back in two thousand and twelve and got an extension for that, and then it didn't happen again. Then we've got a new owner here that is asking for the waiver of that. Um, it's purely a policy decision. Uh, but it's a very good use in, in the right place. We're recommending approval. And that, that uh, waiver is really, it was idea was we were, I think as a city owned the land, maybe this particular land, we sold it to the developer as part of this RFE process. And one of the conditions when we sold it was not only do we like your product, but you're gonna guarantee us to start building to you know get some activity in the park of commerce. Ultimately, they didn't do it. Um, and that was, that was really the main purpose was that original process and so now, that process is long since run its course. They didn't build, they didn't follow through. Ultimately, I don't know if they, they got into bankruptcy or how this happened, I remember there was some process there. But now we have a new landowner, right? And so the option is we either enforce that lien, which really would have been enforced on the prior property owner, which then would carry through and kind of be a, a flag or a negative on this land, which may prohibit or hinder their ability to build, or we waive it um, so that it doesn't become a hindrance and they're able to move forward and hopefully construct a project we like. Is that kind of a summation? That's true. A third option would be you transfer it over and, and make these guys pull building permits within a certain period of time. But again, it's okay. purely policy decisions, not in our code. It just exists um, as a rule that was put on the original development agreement in 2006. Was there any discussion with them about option number three? Were, were, were they open to the developer? I don't know if they're here in the audience. To, I did not discuss that with them. Because if they're, you know, I don't want to put any impediments here because I think I like this product and I would like for them to ultimately build this product and the Parker Commerce is exactly what we're looking for. But I didn't know, since you raised it as an option, I didn't know if that was something they would consider as far as, as long as they pull their permits within you know, a very reasonable period of time, it won't even be effective. We will go ahead. Name and uh, address for the record. Yes, uh, my name is John Falco. Um, address is 14262 uh, Southwest 140th Street, uh, Unit 108, Miami, Florida 33186. Um, I'm the property owner and the business owner, um, or one of. Um, and no, we didn't do not discuss, discuss option number three, but it, it's not going to come to that. We're, we're here to build. I mean, as soon as we get your approval, we're going straight to the building department. I mean, there's no, we need to move our business here. We've run out of space. We're in the Kendall area, Tamir Airport. I've met with several of the council members previously um, that were available to meet. Uh, we discussed the project um, at length. Everyone seemed to be on board at the time. We came up, we uh, met the requirements of the building zoning um, board, um, and we're here just to get our final approval. Um, as far as the waiver goes, again, um, it, it doesn't even apply to us. Actually, the covenant that was put in place is for a different parcel, um, a different folio number than the folio number that we purchased. So there was no way to even investigate that to that extent when we purchased the property. So it really doesn't even apply to us in, in any sense. Um, but again, it's our, our intention to build, um, to go to the building department immediately after we get city council's approval. Okay. Any questions for, for the applicant by the council? More. Vice Mayor Burgess. More, more so just a comment. I mean, this is the type of stuff that we've been waiting on. So I would hate to see right. uh, something that was put in place 13, 13 years ago and, you know, uh, hinder what could possibly be moving forward. You know, and, and, and if it happens to one person, you know, the word's gonna get out, and I think there's a lot of possibilities out there now for good businesses like this, not empty parking lots or junkyards or anything like that that may be in the pipeline. 
um, that, that they haven't shown back up because they're scared of being a junkyard out there. And I think a good, viable, clean business like this would be, a, would be an addition out there. So I'll leave yeah. it at that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I concur with you, Vice Mayor. I, I think that that is, is exactly what we've been waiting for to come to our Parker Commerce. So I thank you for being willing to invest in it. And, and um, you know, so I'm, I'm indifferent as far as the, the waiver or option three. If you agree to option three, great. If you voluntarily doing so, if not, I'm okay either way. Councilman Maldonado. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I recall the applicant, and I met with both applicants uh, months ago. It's not, seems almost like a year ago, <clears throat> if that. And so it was a great product uh, when we looked at it, and, and, you know, they came seeking advice and pretty much putting them out, make sure they met with uh, Joe Cordino Development Services, and uh, they seem to have followed kind of the lead um, that, I, that I gave them. So I'm looking forward to uh, supporting this uh, project. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Guzman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to ask the applicant, how did you come to pick the Park of Commerce to do the business? Like, were you site, were you looking at other properties before you found this one? Did you uh, get help from anyone to find this, this property? Uh, no, uh, actually, uh, we did our own research. We looked at uh, properties from Doral um, down south of here. Um, uh, Doral, as you know, coming from we, we both my partner and myself, as well as a lot of our um, employees, live down south, so the traffic would have been a hindrance. So we decided to come look more south, and we saw the Park, Park of Commerce. There were some properties available um, that were a reasonable distance from both our homes and most of our um, employees' homes, a lot of which live in Homestead already. So, um, And we're looking to expand, um, add employees, so um, you know, we thought it would be a good fit for us. Yeah. The reason I ask is, if he had found it some way, you know, we'd like to continue that marketing effort so we can continue to bring companies like, like yours down here. Thank you. Um, and, we, and we have an intention of expanding as well, so we might actually take over some of the other properties as well. Um, so that's a possibility in the near future. Thank you. Councilman Roth. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many jobs are you guys going to create? Um, I cannot give you a number right now. We're working on several contracts uh, directly with the government at, at this moment, um, and it could be substantial. If that happens, then we would obviously need to expand into additional properties in the area. Um, sure. But uh, right off the bat, I think we can probably add between five and ten positions um, with the, an immediate need. We're kind of waiting before we make to add those uh, employees, that personnel, until we make the move down here because yeah. the transition and distance, uh, the logistics might not be uh, uh, suitable for some of the new employees. We're trying to wait as long as we can, but we're running into a, an issue here. So hoping <laughs> that we can get this uh, passed through today and move forward. <laughs> Very exciting. Thank you, Mayor. Great. Thank you. So you know additional comments or questions from Council. Um, this is a public hearing open to the public. Any questions or comments from the public on tab 17 or tab 22? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion Move it. to approve on tab 17? Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. Motion carries. Do I have a motion on tab 22? Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 18. <clears throat> yes, tab 18 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting final replat approval requested by PMG Asset Services for an approximately 1.069 acre parcel within the Malibu Bay Plan Unit Development PUD. Generally located southeast of the Homestead Extension of the Florida Turnpike, west of Baptist Way and north of 312th Street, is legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, sir, we're recommending approval. Effectively what they're doing is, is moving um, a couple of, uh, uh, moving about an acre of land, just kind of transferring it into the other adjacent plat for uh, or the adjacent area for parking. Uh, needs. We reviewed it to the platting standards and all the things that we needed. It's no impact whatsoever one way or the other. So we're recommending approval. The applicants here uh, discuss any of the details that you may have with this. All right. Vice Mayor Burgess. Didn't we have something similar to this with the, with the, that area over there? Uh, 
six months ago also. The same plat, the same uh, area? Yes. Gosh, we've been going over this for for uh, ever since uh, since it started. There's always seems to be something with this plat that needs to be jiggled around and, and wiggled around. And so um, it all amounts basically to just kind of reallocating parking, this, that, and the other thing. And it's, it's just uh, really, in my opinion, just kind of a paper movement of, uh, of land from one yeah, area to no, the other. No, I just remembered we had done something maybe six, eight months yes, ago we, also. I think we're doing it once a year almost. On, I think we just wanna make George drive down and say hello every now and then. Thank you. <laughs> I'm hoping this is the last one we don't have to do then. <laughs> Any additional questions or comments for council for staff? Seeing none, does the applicant like to come to the podium? Select your name and address for the record. Give my name again. Uh, uh, George Sapero, PMD Asset Services, uh, 4651 uh, Sheridan Street, Hollywood, Florida. Um, uh, would you probably uh, remember uh, a few months ago was the site plan um, or the T plat? Now we're final plot, so it's just the ending of the process, final stage. Any questions, just let me know. Any questions for uh, the applicant? No, seeing none? No, thank you. This is a public hearing, open Mr. to the public. Mayor, you we, yep. we need Go to ahead, James. one comment. Yeah, before you all um, vote, um, uh, staff has spoken to the applicant um, and we need to add a condition to the uh, resolution. Uh, the condition, the second condition uh, to the resolution would be that the applicant shall submit the required subdivision performance bond within 30 days from the effective date of uh, this resolution or the, the development order granting final replat approval. So the, the number is being worked out right now. Um, we don't anticipate there to be a problem, but because we don't have it finalized now, we need to add this condition. All right, this is agreed to, the language is agreed to from the applicant, no objections, okay. All right, this is a public hearing open to the public. Any questions or comments on tab 18? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any final questions or comments from council? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve with the additional conditions stated by the city attorney? Second. Moved and seconded, roll call Madam Clerk. Councilman Maldonado. Yes. Councilwoman Bailey. Councilman Ross. Yes. Councilman Guzman, yes. Vice Mayor Burgess, yes. Mayor Shelley. Yes. The motion carries. Nothing we skipped. That concludes your quasi judicial items. Moving on to legislative items, tab 20. It's the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 30 zoning, Article 4, Supplemental District Regulations, Division 9, Commercial Development Standards. Mm -hmm to amend the development commercial standards and establish mixed use and non-residential development standards, providing for severability, inclusion in the code, providing for conflicts, and providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, sir, we're recommending that the mayor and council approve the uh, ordinance amending chapter 30, the zoning code with our supplemental uh, district design standards um, and, the, uh, and the, de the development standards um, and architectural standards. We were asked to do this back in September in a cow. We've analyzed this and we've come back with, uh, with edits to these standards, which we have uh, in the back. We have the strike through and underline. Effectively, what we've done is go back in and address the design, the orientation of the buildings, uh, orientation of the main, uh, the main entrance. Um, We've looked at windows, building fixtures, something they call 360 degree architecture to make, make sure that the building doesn't have blank walls that, that would sit, sit on a street so it looks like there's activity all around. We looked at uh, issues to deal with roofs, um, uh, materials and finished fa facade treatments, drive-throughs, uh, and some other general standards. And we thought that these would uh, certainly uh, a first step into to giving the applicants a little bit more clarity on what we desire from an architectural point of view as they come in and develop within the city. So we're recommending an approval. We'll answer any questions. Perfect, thank you. I know this is a Vice Mayor Burgess the initiative, so I'm gonna turn it over to him to ask his questions and then follow no, up. I, I wanna say thank you to, to the staff and I think that they've hit on what I was, what I was looking for when, when we had the discussion and moved this back into their lap for some, for some polishing. 
Um, so thank you. And you know, an example, although it doesn't fall exactly under this, is what we did tonight with the 7-Eleven. We had a product that came to us and we, as a body, didn't believe that it was, you know, the aesthetics that we wanted to see out there or that we were looking to hope to bring to the city in the future and for, at the present and the future. And this will help applicants and yourselves as you guys move forward um, to, to, to have a better product for the city and all of its residents. So I want to say thank you and hopefully we can get the support for this tonight on the first reading. And those of you that are here for the second reading will continue with the support and make sure it gets put in place and, and is, as it is adhered to in, in the future. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And my, my only question was kind of how we came about the, the changes in the code or the proposals. I know we had the discussion back and forth at the last meeting, you know, to give you guys some parameters to work from. You had to get a good idea of what we were looking to do and accomplish by amending this code. But ultimately, the, the, in, in, the information that was put in it or the choices that were made, was that based on other code and other communities? Or how did we get to where we got to? Yeah, it's a combination. We did some research on um, other codes and what was applicable. We kind of took a a minimalist approach we tried to, I mean, there are, there are cities that really legislate this stuff very heavily. We tried to take uh, take the do no harm approach, do the lightest we could, and then we used our professional judgment as planners that have been working in not only this community, but other South Dade communities for for many years. And, and uh, we threw it on the wall and see if it stuck, and it kind of did, I guess. So Perfect, yeah, and I did, I did notice it was it was kind of a good, you know, one of the discussions we had is if you go too far one side or too far to the other side, all of a sudden you make it too difficult and expensive to get built. And so it's the balance of trying to find a, a quality product, but would also not discouraging development altogether. So I think you guys did strike a pretty good balance, at least to start with as a, as a base or a framework to get us going, where it provides kind of more minimalistic requests, but it also gives each applicant lots of different options to meet those requirements. So it's not set in stone that it has to be this way, but there's kind of a criteria that gives you guys discretion and us discretion uh, to maybe reach the best product, the best regional area. And then going forward, we have the ability to further tighten it up or add more details as we start to see how it gets applied as the applicants are coming through the process. So I, I do appreciate the work you guys have put into it and thank Vice Mayor for his initiative on, on trying to put this forward and you know put some framework together that'll make sure we get better quality products. David Hennis was our mastermind behind this. I wanted to thank him. He, he uh, took the lead on it. It's excellent work. Perfect. Additional, no additional questions or comments from council. This is a public hearing. Any questions or comments from the public on tab 20? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Wong? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 21. Tab 21 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the bond reduction requested by Kingman Lenar, LLC, for properly, property generally located at the southwest corner of Southwest 152nd Avenue, Kingman Road, and Southwest 320th Street, fully described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, sir. Uh, we're recommending the mayor and the council approve the bond reduction request. Uh, from the initially posted bond that was about $6.2 million down to amount of about $1.1 million. The applicant has completed about 80% of the work uh, out there. We feel that this reduction is commensurate with that and we're going to recommend, we are, uh, we're recommending approval. Perfect. Any, would the applicant like to speak on the item? One Brickle Avenue. Um, uh, I want to thank Mr. Corradino. Very straightforward application. Your subdivision requirements uh, require a bond to be placed to ensure the performance of infrastructure work. Uh, this is a community that you're all very familiar with. Kingman Commons, uh, Porta Vida is the, is the trade name. Um, it's substantially built out and completed. 80% uh, or so of the work has been done. Your engineers have reviewed that that work has been done. As such, we would uh, respectfully request uh, the reduction of the bond in the commensurate amount, leaving still in place uh, the money that would be required um, if for some reason the city had to step in and, and finish the work, which of course we, we don't anticipate will be the case. I'm happy to answer any questions. Perfect, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Um, no additional questions or comments from council. This is a public hearing. Any questions or comments from the public on tab 21? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. 
Councilman Rawls? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. We did tab 22. Tab 23, uh, discussion item on legislative priorities. Who is taking the... Uh, the package is before you. It's kind of the same process we've used each year, which is we put together our wish list items. As staff, we have been reluctant over the years to pick our favorites, because it's really not about our favorites, it's your favorites. In the past, the council has decided to hand the master list to the lobbyists and let them figure out what to do. So you can continue with that process, or you can try something different. We'll take whatever direction that you'd like. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, and I, I know that we've discussed this different years. I think each year I kind of have the same request, which is, you know, from being up in Tallahassee, dealing with the legislators, they, they historically would prefer us to better identify maybe our top three choices versus kind of sending them a, you know, 25-page laundry list of things. You know, I, I do hear that many times when I speak to them, that it makes it difficult for them to advocate for us because they don't know exactly what our priority is. They, they want to try to deal with what we think is the most important. Um, I think it is good to make sure they know what all the issues are because there are opportunities up there where maybe it was an unforeseen issue or the, you know, the opportunity presents itself and so you want to make sure that they know to make the request or ask. Uh, but I do think that we should whittle it down to, you know, probably our top, top three at most. Uh, both of our representatives, or actually all three of our representatives, you've got Representative McGee, you've got Senator Flores, and Representative Rashine, all three are coming to the end of their term limits. Um, and so typically, there is a better opportunity to potentially get something passed, um, you know, that they do for those particular representatives on their way out. Their, their ability to maybe get something through is, is higher than it would have been in years past. And so I'd hate to see us not be able to at least put ourselves in the best position possible by choosing and narrowing down the focus on what we want them to make their ask uh, versus providing them a, a laundry list. So that, that would be my only comments on this and, and then see whether we want to discuss that tonight in detail. Do we want to come back at the next meeting and, and pick our three? Uh, when would we like to do that, knowing that the legislative session will start up in January and the longer we take to deliver that message, if, it, if we deliver a message, the less likely we're going to be positioned again to, to be successful. Yeah, and Mayor, one thing I forgot to mention is that if there's anything you want removed from here uh, and or if you like the package in general, then at least that would be the first two questions that we could get answered. And then if you want to prioritize them even further, sure. what we want, what we want to do is pass on this package and then there's something in here that you don't like right. or that we miss something. Perfect. Thank you. Any, any questions, comments, guidance, direction? Is, that, is our direction to submit it as is? Do we want to make any modifications to it? How would we like to move forward or move forward at all? Any, anybody? <laughs> we, we have to make some decision here. Uh, who's first? Vice Mayor Bird is first. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Well, so I guess you're looking for top threes. So um, my top three would, would definitely be to <clears throat> look for the $500,000 for the renovation of the, of the theater. The um, next one below, uh, two below that, the $500,000 for the public library construction appropriation and or grant. And then the, um, uh, um, the speedway relief, I think, is still a priority. I wouldn't, I mean, it's a right. tough one. So I, I would put that as a 3A or something right. like that. Correct. And then I would also definitely look for uh, the water funding that we've been, the automatic uh, water main flushing for $150,000. So those would be my top three. And I think that those, you're not grasping for the, for the top, you know, for the four or five, six million dollar projects, which seem to be hard to get, but we're looking for three that are reasonably uh, priced uh, as far as the legislators look at it with, the, with dollar, dollar amounts. So those would be the three that I would prioritize uh, if, if so asked. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilwoman Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Well, there's a lot of really important things here, and the one that is at the top of my list, but I don't know if this should be the way to go about, is for senior programming. We continue having issues getting the programming in, um, especially to the FICO Williams Center, so I think we need to handle that um, a little differently and a little... Um, 
taking the matter a little more into our hands. We've had a meeting. Um, we had a meeting with Councilwoman Fairclaw, Parks, and myself over the summer, and I think we're on to some good ideas to start something there. So my vote would be the Seminole Theater, the library as well, and I'm torn on the third. No, I'm, not, I'm saying to not add the senior. So the library, the Seminole Theater, and then I'm torn between the water and um, the informational technology upgrade. I've been reading a lot about that and the whole cyber um, strengthening of uh, for cities especially. So I'm between those two as a third. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? I, I agree with actually both. I think we have a lot of overlap, so that's good. We have kind of a plan. I agree with Vice Mayor's um, list. I, it's things that we, I know, have all been working on that are priorities for all of us and, and have worked on and been successful sometimes in the past as well. And I think the only one that would be different right now with um, Councilwoman Bailey was just the city information technology upgrade would be another one. So we can either decide to, to keep that or add that or add that as a... Perhaps we could Add as, a, as an option. Perhaps we could expand to, 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 you know, if there's a consensus for some, you know, if we have three solid ones and we have a couple more that are, you know, whatever we should work, you Correct. know, that they can work also towards. We shouldn't, you know, if there's a couple extras that are strong with people, Correct. we should make sure we try to include them. Five, five, four or five is much better than 25. 25 Mayor, or 50, if, I, if so I could so also clarify, because there's different categories up there and each year we've applied for the library grant, which is a competitive process, each year we, we score really well and at, at the end of the day they pull the money out of the budget completely and we don't get the funding. So we kind of put the library thing into two categories this year, hoping that if we don't get it in the one, maybe on the technology side they'll give it because we can contribute that towards the virtual reality cube. So if, if you like the whole library concept, we really suggest that we keep both of those there. So maybe if you wanted to jump it to four, because that, that'll help us at least try to find the money for the library one way or the other. Which one is that one? Is that the? Jason. Good. Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, I can clarify. So uh, there are two requests here. Um, the first is, excuse me, will I find it? Uh, 16.5 million for the entire project. I'm sorry, one moment. On page five is one of And then 500,000 for the, um, the $500,000 is for the construction. And we've ranked sixth this year. So what uh, the lobbyists typically do is encourage uh, the uh, legislature to uh, adequately appropriate funding to the division of library, ser uh, library and information services. So that's what we've done routinely. Um, but the, the second uh, request, is, as the city manager has illuminated, is that we would request um, an additional funding for, a special, for special programming. So uh, we thought about something for digital programming, which would help for the, the attractions and other, and other programs at the, at the facility at the library. So that's, is that not listed currently in the list we have? Yes, it's, it, it would be part of the $16.5 million for the entirety of the project. We okay. would just break it out for, with a separate request okay. for when we, yeah. when we have to submit to the, to the House of Representatives for, for project funding and also to the Senate. Okay. Yeah, because as I say, I think $16.5 would, would be a hard ask for. No, we that's a lot yeah. of money. You're not, you're not getting that. But I think you know, $500,000, $150,000, you know, within that range, we have the ability. So I, I do think that... You know, we have the 500 for the public library construction, and then you're saying maybe add a secondary subline item of another 500,000 related to special programming Correct. or informational technology related to the to the library or cyberary. So that they don't see it necessarily as oh, is that's the competitive library right. process. This is another right. uh, type of item that they can pull from their special funds or someplace else in the budget, because every year, anytime we've asked for anything involving the library, it goes into that competitive process, and then we get ranked well and and then we don't get the money. Right. And I think, but I think you're right, I think, because typically you're asking for construction dollars, which has a special pot of money that it mm -hmm. has to go through, so everything gets sucked into there, but now you're asking for, you know, that, that carve-out is something that's not part. So I do think that's a smart request and a smart move, and, and our chances of possibly getting those dollars are, are better. So, so I, if I, you're going to do three, then we certainly suggest that those two be in there. If you're going to do four, if that justifies four, then I don't think they're going to mind if we give them four. 
No, and also, if, I'm, if I might, um, we understand that uh, Representative Rashine is very interested in, in, again, another water project, right. and uh, she was successful in, uh, in getting some dollars last year for, it was $300,000 for the water well project. Um, so this request of the flushing system um, seems feasible. Yeah, very So good. That would, that's the other reason why sometimes we don't like to prioritize because we think we can get money from something that they think they can get, but it's not very exciting and doesn't compete as well with breast cancer, for example, you know, but if the money is there for the, the flushing, we'd like to take it because it's free money. No, and I, I concur. I mean, that, that I think is why we, we should meet with our lobbyists. We should meet with our representatives per this process because they're going to help us identify what they think are the hot topic items and that they want to help push for. But I think that we also need to be more proactive in what we're doing tonight, which I think is going to be helpful in identifying three or four top priorities and then, you know, also meeting with our representatives on all of our list and let them say, well, we think we can get that too. But if not, these are where we want our focus. So I, I think all that's productive. Yes, and Mayor, we're actually on schedule. If, if you were to um, pass your, your identify some priorities tonight and and uh, move forward with this list of priorities, we'd be online to sub, uh, we'd be um, on schedule to submit for the deadline of the project funding request of November fifteenth in the House. Correct. Yeah, because they have to file those forms by then. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay uh, Vice Mayor Burgess. Yeah, I would just say that you know as we come up with our list, and if somebody's got something that they feel strongly about then they can go to the representatives yeah, and, and pitch their idea and their reasoning of why it's an important issue to them and why they think it's uh, maybe a extra special priority that the city should look at among, above and beyond where we're at. Just because we pick three or whatever, four tonight, whatever the number happens to be, doesn't prohibit somebody from the council going up there and, and working the floors and the hallways and, and the legislators and the senators are, uh, uh, on both sides to, to bring that project forward uh, to help the city. So I just want to put that out there. Okay. Do we have some consensus right now? It looks like we're on the, as far as the Seminole Theater monies, the 500,000 public library construction, the another 500,000 you said for cyberium f uh, programming or informational technology programming. Although no. likely we won't call it cyberium or library, we're just going to call it a technology, something in the yeah. technology realm that doesn't look like library so that they don't just shove us into that library yeah. category. Uh, whatever, yeah, whatever we need to do there, but I think that there's consensus for that. There's consensus for this automatic water main flushing system. Um, I know that Councilwoman Bailey is interested in the city information technology upgrade as an item, and then you know, kind of as another alternative would be that Homestead Miami Speedway tax relief in the event that there's an opportunity for that to pop up. So we've been on that for yeah, I, nine it's, or ten years, and it's it's a unfortunately we've been up there, and, and uh, Mayor Shelley's been with me many a times, and every year since I've been sitting on this dais, I've been up there trying to get that taken away. Unfortunately, with it being a uh, constitutional right. uh, amendment. It's very, very difficult for us to get rid of it, and the, and the only way to do that is to have a, uh, a legislator that has all the pull in the world that can, can walk it through, like the city of Miami did one day on, on their parking garages. And unfortunately, we were very, very close a couple times, and then people get, get leery of what the process or the, the attention it's going to bring when you're doing away with a constitutional amendment that asks for money, so they back off. But... So, I mean, I understand that that's not a priority, but I don't think we should ever let it leave the, uh, the page of, uh, of asking because yeah. it is something that I think we're due. And uh, unfortunately, um, we're the only ones that are still affected by this, by this amendment that was put in. And it, uh, it's, a neg it's a negative because I think it holds things back from developing out there and, and the expense that it cost us every year to the county for the ad valorem taxes. So anyway, I don't think, we, you know, it needs to be a priority, but I think it should not ever be forgotten as, as we march through the halls up there. So okay. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. All right, so pull, pull it off the priority list, but add it to a, you know, as we're talking, it's always a talking point when we're meeting with legislators and our lobbyists need to keep an eye on it for any opportunity whatsoever to, to put some legislation somewhere, somehow, to maybe help, help solve that problem. So do we have... Um, do, we, do you guys have consensus? I think we, go ahead. Um, you may also want to consider, um, and I 
realize that uh, Councilwoman Fairclaw is not here to speak to it, but the breast cancer screening program, Leader McGee encouraged uh, this body to uh, support that as a priority. In fact, he'd like the city to request even more dollars this year, $500,000. So just wanted to make sure you knew about that as well. Okay, all right, perfect. Any, any additional questions, comments, direction? Do you guys have what you need to start with? Okay, do you have anything else, Vice Mayor? Or? Okay. All right, so that's the that's all for tab 23. Next is public comment. Public comment. I'll now open it for public comment. Uh, first person is Kevin Sullivan. Please come up and state your name and address for the record. Kevin Sullivan, 1860 Southeast Sixth Court. Tonight, I've been a big proponent of term limits, so we have one tonight, um, and I'm fine with that. But I do have to say to the Vice Mayor that you're gonna be missed. Um, really, a hard worker, uh, not always we were on the same page, but any issue I came asked him about, he looked into it, got back to me, and I know that the people in our neighborhood are very thankful for all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Next I have uh, David Goodwin. Uh, greetings and salutations. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm here is just, I don't know if the city council is aware of what's, what's going on to a, a high extent. Please I'm speak into, it, it's hard to hear you. Can you speak into the microphone? Oh, how's that? Is yeah, that better? better. <clears throat> I don't know if city council is aware of this at a high extent, but uh, what had occurred is I had called, I was getting uh, some help from a third party entity with my electric bill. And when I uh, called uh, public uh, services and explained to them the, the date that I would be paying on the bill, uh, which would be on the 18th, and the woman told me, that's fine, everything's okay. Well, lo and behold, my electricity went off on the 16th. So I went to uh, make numerous phone calls. And after I made numerous phone calls, and I'm I trying to find this thing here, because, yeah, Homestead Utilities. On the 17th, I made eight uh, calls uh, for a total of 34 minutes. And uh, just nothing. And of course, on the 16th, I made uh, uh, th uh, 33 minutes of calls on the 17th, six phone calls. On the 18th, uh, after I had dealt with your robotic system there for paying the bill and had to make, I think it was about three phone calls and got, the, and after I gave all the information, nothing happened. So I ended up going back and calling again and of course, uh, after uh, uh, after a period of time, I finally got a hold of someone because I didn't want to talk to anyone except for a supervisor. And uh, she and she called me back and told me uh, that nothing had gone through. So I went through again and did it again. And uh, I was really surprised. She initiated a call to me and let me know that uh, it had gone through. So here the bill was paid on the 17th and uh, I'm calling and calling and calling and uh, let's see, oh, six, six calls on the 18th. Uh, that was an hour and 20 minutes and nothing. Called on the 19th because I wanna know what's going on with my 
my power. I have no electricity, and I had to spend. So, sorry, your, your, your time's up. But can somebody from staff get with him to find out if we can figure out, yeah, what his issue is and, and make sure that it gets happened. resolved? You need to get the final of this. This is super important. I, I, we we, we okay. have to follow the rules here. So if you'll get with staff, though, they'll make sure that it gets resolved. And what? then staff's going to meet with you right now. If you'll go meet with them and make sure that they get the issue back to us and hopefully get us resolved. Thank you. Next is Lewis Cruz. Good evening. My name is Louis P. Cruz. I reside at 140 20 Southwest 150th Street. I'm a Korean War combat veteran. I'm here uh, to present you with the uh, military TV banners. The military TV banner was designed for city to honor veterans and active members of the armed forces by displaying banners on city pole, light poles. This is a sample of the banner. This is from the city of Bolan. Each banner is a sponsor, so it won't, uh, it won't cost the city Speak anything. Speak in the microphone so they can hear you, sorry. The uh, banners are sponsored by uh, private, uh, special family. 80% are sponsored by family of the veterans or active members of the armed forces, and uh, about 20% by businesses. And uh, you display it for an amount of time. Uh, each city is, is different. We are over... 60 cities in the United States and about 11, 11 states. Uh, and they, each, each one display for different time. Usually uh, from uh, Memorial Day to Veterans Day. And it's a sponsor, and I have the name of the sponsor. You want to put that around the chair? Huh? You want us to tell the other yeah. side? They just joined the uh, city of the right, they showing off, they're going to be doing it for next year uh, by, by uh, uh, the Memorial Day. Uh, I just want to know if you're interested in. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think what you, I, I, I will give you more information on email. Or yeah, yeah, I was going to say, give us staff there um, and give him the I'm information. High, excuse, I'm high, really, Get with staff, give them the information, and you can give them more of the details about what, how the other cities have done it, and then they yeah, can we, better bring it forward to us for a discussion a later on. Run by yourself. The only thing you have to do is authorize it and have somebody in the city represent it. We, we do everything. We supply you with a website uh, so you can uh, collect the money, et cetera. And, okay. Okay. and it could be used, usually it's used uh, for the um, military um, Military board, city board, right? Aff military affair board. Okay. And they raise funds right. by doing this. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, just give us staff, give me your information. They'll get more info about it, and then they can bring it back to us potentially at a future council meeting um, for our further debate and discussion. Next is uh, Steve Moore. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Steve Moore. I live at 1539 Flamingo Court in the Villages. I'm here for two problems that can't seem to get resolved. I've lived out there for four years. I've only been in Homestead since 72. Um, we got a problem with people parking on the grass on North Canal. The city put up some signs, no parking, tollway zones, about eight of them, okay? And excuse me the way I say this, but I don't know what clown built that school, okay, because they didn't do too good of a job. And Chief Roll's hands are tied because he doesn't have the manpower. One suggestion the city needs to do 
you get more police officers in order for them to do their job. They wreck the, the grass, tear up the grass, litter. The homeowners over there have to pick up the trash on weekends. And it's just a, a revolt, it's a problem. And I live in my backyard, I see North Canal, and I can see everybody parking. And Officer Acosta had a handle on it at one time, but like he told me, they don't have the manpower to send people out there. You know, they could make the city a lot of money with tickets, you know, but, and the other thing is handicap parking in the city. I'm authorized because I'm an open heart patient, okay? And it really bothers me. I don't really have to park in a handicap. I don't mind walking a little bit, but there again, our forces, the men that protect us, we don't have the manpower. City needs to take a good look at hiring more police officers. Colonel Kennedy can't do it by himself. Chief Roll, there's nobody better. There's nobody better. So I wish the council would take a look at correcting the North Canal parking on the grass. Okay, thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Next is Ed Powell. they don't that's a letter there there's a letter that uh, went out that was one of the, actually had to be one of the delegates in Keysgate and they 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 remained anonymous but that letter they had a meeting Mr. Rosen has bailed on the golf course and I told you that from the beginning he was going to bail and uh, look you can read the rest of this thing he will not refurbish the golf course as promised he has a right to build 20 units per acre being grandfathered. D.R. Horton doesn't want the golf course. They don't want to own the land. Lennar has no, has no reason to, buy, to build the golf course, and they don't own the land. Well, let's talk about another thing Mr. Uh, Rosen's good for, other than his PAC, and his financing all these three candidates. Tens of thousands of dollars, he's throwing dirt all over the city. And if you don't believe me, folks, go to True Homestead blog, it's on Facebook. You'll see this letter, plus you'll see all the other trash that Mr. Rosen and his pack have been sending out about three of, the, three of his little pets. Okay, it is, it is like Mr. Gretz has had a rant here a, a month ago, I'm sorry I missed it, about throwing up and vomiting. You want to talk about vomit, let's talk about this election. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous that these people, they, they don't have a record. They got to go out and trash their opponents. Why don't you have a right? Why don't you? Why don't you step on your record? Why don't you say something you've done for four years? They don't have a record. Okay, Mr. Guzman, I want to thank you. You're the only guy in this dais that comes back and answers me. I want to. I appreciate you doing that, and I hope we can stay in touch as you retire into whatever you're going to do after you leave here. We're going to have some new faces, and I hope to God that we get a council and we get some people that have some sense of honesty and transparency. And Mr. Shelley, you ought to answer your emails. You never answer your emails. Can I take a point of privilege? Yeah, go, go ahead, Vice Mayor. Thank you. It's, Mr. Powell sends emails on a continuous basis. Unfortunately, for years and years, and this book right here shows them, homophobic, pornographic, racial emails that received on the city server that I asked to forget. The reason I don't answer his emails is because I refuse to respond to somebody that sends this kind of crap out on a daily basis. And if anybody wants to see it, come open it up. It's public record. And I will refuse to answer a gentleman that sends this stuff. And if I was to read it, open up these pictures, I guarantee you there's not one person in town 
that would not be upset and appalled by it, other than Mr. Powell, who sends it out on a daily basis. So thank you. I'll put it right here. I'll put it right there for the public record. Anybody that wants to see it can come up and see what he sends out and why nobody will respond to his emails. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for clearing up why none of us respond to Mr. Powell's emails or we'll probably open them. Um, next is Kenny Cenat. None? Next, last is uh, Mr. Kim Hill. Kim Hill, Southwest Side. That's a very good segue for me because if you want to get that outraged over you call his racist, homophobic comments or whatever. Well, I got a chief right here that just, you know, when he was reporting to FDLA about one of his officers in the investigation involving Hispanic workers, called, the, called this guy's wife a Mexican girl, a little migrant worker. Where's the outrage, Mr. Burgess? I believe in measuring all of this by one yardstick this guy works for us. We're coming back, and I'm back up here to speak about the body cam issue once Mr. Hill, again. Yes. if you're going to call me out tonight, I'm going to lay the record straight out there for you tonight. Let's get it on. You're not from the Southwest. You live in the villages. So don't come up here telling us once every again, week that you live in the Southwest. Once again, white male trying to tell me where I'm from. I was and secondly, born and we all know that you showed up after Southwest. you got cut off from the chief roll once gravy again, train when his son took you. We're going to give I'm you your going three going minutes back. Don't worry about it. I got, I got to get, my I got to get back in control. Three minutes. The let, only let reason him. you stand there is because you got cut off from the chief roll gravy train. You can, yeah, so I know all about you coming down from Atlanta, Once again, Tony. Once again, white male with his warped perception of African American who can't take care of himself. Once again, you can't stand my comments. See you later, boy. All right, got it. Anyway, as I was saying, once again, as I was saying, we never, and you all have used the deflection of the lack of officers, but during the budget hearing, no one got up and demanded anything about officers. Where do we see that? No one. Now, Mr. Maldonado, you're getting ready to run for county commissioner. Body cameras are a major issue. You know, you haven't stated your position, but it's going to come out. I'm going to continue this fight. We will fight till hell freeze over. And when it freezes over, we're going to get out and fight on ice. You can't distort the facts. May I have my minutes back? No, go ahead. Why I can't have my minutes back? Once again, you know, you all try to bridge my right of freedom of speech and me to be able to address and, and grieve my issues with the city of Homestead. And every time it comes, but I see you in court. I will see you in court. And I'm glad that it's displayed right here in public so everyone can see you. You cannot hide. I come up, Mr. Guzman, you, have in, you don't have anything to say about me being shortchanged on my three minutes to be able to make my comments. You don't have anything. You don't have anything, Ms. Baby. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Now, watch how when I talk, he's going to come get me. He said, you have the time. Have a nice day. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hill. That's all I have for public comment. I'll now, now close the public comment. Next, uh, business from the city manager. Okay. There you're gone. You're live. I just wanted to remind everybody about the big uh, grand uh, debut on Saturday. We hope to see you all there, 4 to 8 p.m. And um, is there anything else we need to report? Yeah, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor, for calling out uh, what I have referred to in, uh, in the past meetings as some of our um, uh, negative people who come up here and smear and throw mud and 
say all kinds of things, and it's easy. Well, I'd say this. It's difficult to sit up here and try to explain every so often why you don't respond to emails, but if you look at that book, you know, how many nude photos do you need to look at before you stop re 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 referring to these emails and stop? Like, if you, if you, how many times does it become like workplace harassment for staff when you get an email and there's nude photos or there's, um, let's just say, misogyny or there's racism or there's uh, anti-Muslim speech or anti-this and anti-that. At some point, how many times do you have to open them? Well, I see the size of that binder is a pretty good indication of how much of that you've received. The plethora of hate and uh, disgusting, uh, vile things that have come through the email system. So how many, how many more things do you have to get before at some point you don't respond to it? I think that is the fundamental question for each and every one of you, because I know you all respect uh, First Amendment, but when you get photos of pornography in your government box, do you feel like you even want to open them? Because God forbid you're sitting there at your computer and you open them up and then one of your employees sees it, then they may feel harassed as well. So I think that's a real issue in terms of why one individual doesn't get responses and, and or the same individual comes in and accuses people falsely of crimes. How many times do you get uh, accused of crimes before you just decide you're just not gonna respond to it? Because it seems like even when you do respond, you end up with, well, the potential of seeing more naked photos come through. So I just I think it's important for somebody to see that and I'm glad you've offered that to the public because I'm sure anybody uh, would be happy to, uh, in fact, if somebody needs us to scan the whole thing and forward it to them, I'm sure we could make that available as well. Uh, and uh, that being said, uh, we hope to see you all on Saturday. It's gonna be fun. Thank you, City Manager. Business from the City Attorney. Just one more. <laughs> Sorry, I have to request an executive session in the case for us. Uh, Bruton v. City of Homestead, case number 19 CV 23999 in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Florida. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, reports from Mayor and Council. Councilman Guzman. I don't have anything, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilman, Councilman Roth. Thank you, Mayor. You caught me with my mitt in my mouth. That's okay. Uh, remind, I want to remind people of the Halloween event coming up Friday. Pedro, maybe you want to chime in and give some details on that for, um, it's a spectacular night. I mean, we got a lot of people that show up to this event. So give you a few details about that for this Friday at Harris Field. So this Friday will be our annual Halloween event at Harris Field from 6 to 9 p.m. We'll have a few food trucks out there, free rides for the kids, free trick-or-treating, and a free haunted house. It's really scary. It's going to be a great time. And then uh, there'll be tons of tables for uh, trick or treating. Thank you. And I, I just want to add, this is uh, the last meeting that all of us will sit together for, for as a council and uh, election coming up. And I didn't want to bring too much of that into it, but I did want to share my last three or four months experiences with meeting residents, hundreds of residents throughout the city of Homestead. And what I found talking to hundreds of residents, 98% of them are extremely happy with the city of Homestead, with where they live, with our police department, with our parks and recs department, our, our management staff. Um, obviously we have growing pains, traffic's an issue, I would say a few dozen people that I spoke to that brought up traffic actually complimented our traffic to where they came from before. Uh, most of the traffic inside the city is very tolerable. It's the traffic we hit once we leave the city, once we get to exit six, exit nine along the turnpike. So my compliments to 
everyone, including this council that sits here today, Mr. Brea, Park and Rec, Human Resources, Development Services, CRA, for all the services that you guys provide to the 98% of the citizens that are happy with what is happening in this city. I know that Saturday is going to be an extremely exciting day. I'm not sure what to expect as far as the turnout. It's probably going to be extremely huge. But when they see what has been created in downtown Homestead on Saturday and into the weeks that they visit that project, will make them proud. People are talking about it. People are excited that they don't have to drive to uh, the Dolphin Mall for Dave and Buster's. They're going to have that kind of lively entertainment and family atmosphere here in the city of Homestead. So I just wanted to share some of my experiences over the last three or four months as I've been talking to the residents in the city. They're extremely happy with the performance of this city, this staff, this management team, the police department, the parks and recs. Yeah, we have our growing pains. There's no question about that. And we will work on that in the future. But I just wanted everyone that works for the city to know that you are truly appreciated out there, not only by me, but by the people who live and work and play in this city. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Maldonado. No, I have any, uh, nothing, nothing. nothing tonight. Councilwoman Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Along with the Southwest Advisory Committee, we are hosting Thanksgiving in the Park, a beautiful semi-formal sit-down dinner at Roby George Park. We will have music, delicious food, a chance to get together, and break bread as a community. We're reserving tables for businesses and larger families in the Southwest, so we will have all of that information up on our SWAC website, which is cityofhomestead.com slash SWAC. So please email us if you would like to reserve a table, and we hope to see you out there. We will have a DJ, and it will be a beautiful, beautiful evening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Vice Mayor Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, too, have been uh, privileged to be up here for 12 years. <laughs> It's a little bit bittersweet tonight, and I didn't mean for it to end the way it did, but you know, you can only sit here for so long and have people come up here that, tear the, that try to tear the city down and, uh, and have nobody behind them. There's a couple individuals that come up here and uh, are negative, 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 and you can only take so much of that <clears throat> as somebody who's given their heart and soul to this city. And it, it gets you. And uh, you know what? I did what I did tonight, and I'm proud of it. And, uh, and I hope that everybody up here is proud of what we've done, and they should be more than proud. They should be up on, their, on the dais, beating on their chest, because we've done more in this city in the last eight years under Mr. Gretzis than had been done in the previous 112 years or 104 years, whatever the number was. Um, our, our, when it started, it was a grandiose city, and it, and it went down, but we have brought it back, and it's gonna be there again soon sooner than later. And with your leadership up here after I leave, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna get there. I'm not worried about it. I wanna congratulate Mr. Guzman on a job well done in your, in your term here. Uh, wish Mr. Councilman Roth luck. Mr. Maldonado's moving on at some point soon. Wish him luck with his uh, future endeavors. Uh, Councilwoman Bailey, you've been a positive influence on this dais and, and in the neighborhood, so thank you for stepping forward and running a couple years ago and continuing to represent the entire city as you do. Mayor Shelley, you represent us in more ways than we know in Tallahassee when you're up there all the time for farm share and for the city, so thank you for all that you do, the hard leg work that you do up there. It's not easy being away from home and, and doing all that, but I know that uh, we can call you Anybody from the staff can call and say, hey, can you help us in Tallahassee? And you're there in a minute, within a minute, helping, you know, whichever way you can. We've gone up there and fought for the CRA. We've saved it several times. And I know the hard work that you do for us up there. So thank you very much. If Councilwoman Faircloth was with her, I'd tell her thank you for all of her dedication and hard work also. Um, 
and everybody else that's sitting out there. Some of you I can see behind the book and some I can't. <laughs> it's kind of thick. But thank you to everybody because everybody's made this job easier for me. And um, I certainly do appreciate what everybody has done for me out there. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, we'll see you somewhere down the road for a cold beer. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And I didn't necessarily um, plan to, to speak on you tonight. I think I'm, I'm saving it. I think all of us are saving it for when we do kind of the, the change of the guard up here, you know, after the election. But, but I do want to, um, you know, thank you for your leadership up here for the last 12 years. You know, I've served with you, I guess, for the last, I think, eight of those 12 years. And, and you've always been, you know, kind of a, a solid rock and somebody here that, you know, has been stable and is consistent and both your principles and both your conscience and, and does the research and, and makes those decisions, you know, after a lot of thought and deliberation. And, and I, I appreciate all the time and effort you've put into every decision you've made, you know, some of the battles that we fought together and some of the, some of the issues that we've worked on together. And you've always been a stoic person up there to work with and, and stand beside and fight those battles. And so I thank you for, for being there for the city and, and you will be missed, you know, as was stated by Mr. Sullivan. I mean, you're gonna be very, very much so missed and in times of need, you've stepped up uh, back when we, you had to be mayor and, and fill that void for mayor at one time. Uh, you did so and you did so very well and, and you were able to lead us through that very rough, rough and rocky time uh, for the city of Homestead. And so, you know, I will say more and, and probably do a more thorough job at, at, the, at the right time, but I, I did wanna at least say that tonight because uh, I, I think that you know you're, you're very deserving of it, and I just want to know how much you, how much we appreciate you, how much I appreciate you, and I think the city and the city staff appreciate you for all you've done and all the sacrifices you've made on behalf of the city and the city's residents. So publicly, thank you, and you will be missed. Anything else from council? If not, then I need a motion to adjourn. Moved, Moved and seconded. We are adjourned. <laughs>